Well, now it's time for the podcast portion where we just make loud, wet noises with our mouth like wolf people. It's Blood Feud with a she. I mean, if you think about it, if we're maybe instead of, you know, the disc, you know, revolving because we're on a flat disc, right? Right. So instead of the disc revolving in like, because the way, it, like with the earth, like the earth revolves mm-hmm. and, or it rotates. And so that's, you know, day and night. And then a revolution around the sun is a full year. But because in Quernos, or in Telbos, like it's a disc, not a globe, so it doesn't rotate. We just are going around the sun that quick all the time. Well, you realize the outside part of the disc is moving faster than the inside part of the disc, so that has a would have a. But it depends. No, rotation. no, no. But uh, that would have an impact on the on the perception of time. I always imagined that the disc. Like, but that's only if the disc is rotating, like flails through if space. The disc is spinning. <laughs> it's like a coin being spun. Exactly. Yes. But that's only if the disc is actually rotating. If the disc is just well, stationary and revolving around, we'll just leave that for the discologists. Why don't we? The disc, the, the disc, disc jockeys. The disc, <laughs> he's just going to say disc jockeys. <laughs> Hi, I'm Clark, and I play Lotion, the half elf cleric. Hello, my name is Rod, and I play Alicordia, a human rogue. I'm Scott, and I'm your gamekeeper. Hi, I'm Rod, and fuck me, right? Hi, I'm Scott, and. I can't make fun of myself because I will punish my players for it. <laughs> Hi. I, I feel some sort of latent aggression here. <laughs> There's some animosity here, yeah. I can tell. Is Would the, you like some fireball? <laughs> is the bullying catching up to us, perhaps? <laughs> I'm Steven. I play Shun, an emo halfling ninja. What happened last time? Like an archaeologist's notebook, almost about a recent excavation where they found this artifact. And it roughly details the location that they got it from. I have to talk to Lamarche. He's the quartermaster for the Denis of John DeFranco's been murdered. It, it, was, it was for a job that we had done. Some mysterious benefactor had hired. Every job is listed here. It's categorically referenced by myself, none other. If he was hiring you for a, a role with the Denis of it would be in my documents here. Now apparently I work for this other guy. I don't even know his name. A carriage starts to approach in the distance. I wouldn't touch those curtains if I was you, girl. And it's the familiar voice of Wolfie Rosage. As the leader of the Denisabor gang sits across from you, partially obscured. There's a new piece moving on this board. Find out who this person is and what they want. Twice now in the past two days, I've heard a, a church bell toll that may have some significance to me of some sort. You make it to the gravekeeper's hut. You open the drawer and carved into the bottom is the symbol of the kind of scales that you would weigh you know, precious metals with. You see a simple graveyard. You hear all around you just soft, mocking laughter. A man with his eyes gouged out, fresh blood dripping down his face. And he looks at you and he tilts his head and then you immediately are no longer able to see him as corpses slam themselves up against the gate and at least 30 horrifying humanoid creatures with their parts of their faces sloughing off and, and falling away start reaching through the gates at you. How does someone bury that many people that aren't dead yet? <laughs> Hi, Scott. Okay. Oh, his, his beer order's here. Oh, oh, oh. Is that a beer dash? What? Da, da, da. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Where, you can do beer through skip. Yeah. <clears throat> I did it once during a snowstorm during lockdown last year. I ordered, uh, I ordered from the LC, but I had to wait until the next day for it to get delivered. Yeah. Even though I ordered it in the morning. <clears throat> and is it like if because you Papa over- was craving that sweet liquor. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Is it over? Is it free delivery over like eighty dollars or something like that? Yeah, that's something like that. Okay. Uh, you see a man with his eyes gouged out, fresh blood dripping down his face, and then you immediately are no longer able to see him as corpses slam themselves up against the gate and at least 30 horrifying humanoid creatures with their parts of their faces slothing off and, and falling away start reaching through the gates at you. It's Sam Neill from the 1997 movie Event Horizon. And Sam Neill says, <laughs> no. <laughs> A very familiar face to Lotion looks at him and smiles as Immediately you lose sight of him as the undead start to swarm. And the gate is holding because you've tied it. But they're coming at all of you and they're reaching for your alicordia. Oh yeah, she's she's backed off. Lucian! Sean! Sean's still in the house. <laughs> He's taking a nap <laughs> on the bed. Uh, is it still my initiative? It is. And I think it's important to note in this uh, Telposian world, the, the dead just don't like get up. and This is like yeah. horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> also, I... Shun hasn't actually seen an undead yet. Yeah, to oh. Shun, this is like grave robbing Conra. <laughs> Shun's uh, like, the there's someone waiting for us. <laughs> they, they knew it was happening. Guys, it's the fuzz. Lotion. Um, hey, yeah, undead would definitely be new to him, but it's not completely unheard of due to his religious studies and study in the, what would be, not the, he knows a little bit about the infernal and that sort of thing. Yeah, like for um, Lotion, this would be a thing that you understand. Oh, wait, no, Lotion has some, seen the undead. Oh, right. Yeah, you, that big part of my backstory. You understand <laughs> this? What? You know that it's a thing that can happen? Yeah. It's not very common. No. Yeah. It's kind of like seeing the Aurora Borealis. Neat, you think to yourself. Lotion freezes up for the briefest of seconds when he sees all the undead. He has not seen this many undead since a very dark time in his life. And I reach out my hand and I cast Stink Fog. Sacred Flame. I cast Stink Booty. <laughs> <laughs> I, cast, I cast my damage cantrip Sacred Flame. and we'll, So one of the undead may, must make a deck save. The fire... It's not fire, it's light, but it looks yeah. like fire. Like, it looks like flaming energy of light. It crashes through the wrought iron, and it hits one of the undead in the chest. And his whole chest just buck. Peels away into nothing, and the body collapses. And uh, in response, the undead kind of start backing away, almost in fear. Uh, and and Alicordian shouldn't you feel immediate relief and indifference, because you still haven't seen anything. <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> I like to imagine <laughs> Shun's gonna have no idea about supernatural or God or anything. And he he's, doesn't <laughs> believe in the supernatural or like the I know gods and, really out there. But at he all. was just about faced with proof, irrefutable proof, and he's inside probably scratching his balls or jerking um, off again. Uh, but Lotion, you see as the faces start to fade off into the mist of the morning, uh, a single your face kind of stays before it kind of. Homer Simpson stint to the book. <laughs> <laughs> that same eyeless face that looks at you and you hear a voice say, Not today. That illusion fades off. Tremblingly goes, That's right. Definitely not today and not any day. Be gone from here. You look down and you're still holding the drawer with the scale. <laughs> <laughs> I've still got the scale. Okay, the drawer. Can I borrow the Okay, this, the drawer with the scales, what happens? That's drawer plus, plus one. Plus one to hit. Drawer. No, drawer. it's not like a weapon or anything. It's just I like know, you notice see. after casting Sacred Flame that you're still holding this symbol of a bygone era. Lotion looks at the drawer and he looks at the, um, the, um, the symbol of the scales and he goes, huh. Alicordia, will you do me a favor? Will you cut out this symbol from the drawer, please? Uh, one thing you notice is that before the symbol was like slightly faded and weathered with age, uh, it looks like it was burnt into it yesterday. Now. Crisp. Fresh. Interesting. So it has, I guess in context, like as Alicord has been slowly kind of backing away from the gate that she had tied together with the undead that she's kind of like getting freaked out about. Uh, does she see Lotion do this sacred flame thing? Why don't you roll a perception check for me? See what you noticed. 
Let's let the dice decide. I will say Shun alone inside the house would probably look around the house. You're probably taking a dump. Um, yeah. 18. Uh, yeah, you, you noticed this for sure. Okay, so this and is... And it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Hundred percent, because we've never seen this before. You just blasted the chest out of some undead that just started creaking out of the ground out of nowhere, <clears throat> and it was like it's kind of wild-eyed. But they now they've all kind of Homer Simpson. Yeah, they <laughs> Homer Simpson. <laughs> I think that's going to be a new new verb now. Homer Simpson into the into the mist, and uh, she. I guess, yeah, we'll take the, the bottom of the drawer from you and look at you and just be like, what the hell was that? Abominations from my past. I sense that something... All of them in this graveyard? No. What kind of past do you have? No, I, not, not particularly these corpses or these resting souls, but something from my past, something I have unfinished business with, I guess you could say has selected me as an enemy, and I have... I will have to deal with this evil spirit, entity, whatever it may be. Would you like to know more? <laughs> <laughs> Click. Thank, thanks, Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> maybe maybe at this point, Lo do you guys want to hear some of Lojan's backstory? I feel but, like Lojan might be inclined to share yeah, it. Yeah. I think uh, Shun <laughs> looks around I the tell shed. this great big long story, and then I look <laughs> and Shun finally steps out, being like, oh, yeah, that was a good nap. <laughs> just like, there's no toilet paper in there. <laughs> you find uh, a single letter. Uh, just the letter A. Handwritten, and it says... <laughs> um, letter A? And Sesame Street single style. A single letter. Oh, oh okay. Find the letter C. <laughs> C is for cookie, and that is good enough for me. Go ahead, Scott. Sorry. I find a handwritten letter. F. <laughs> or fuck off and die. <laughs> uh, just written in simple script, and it says, The chapel has fallen from disuse. The people no longer pay the tithes. I can no longer uphold the cemetery. Or those laid with him. Well, there seems to be a note from the gravekeeper explaining why he abandoned the place. Chapel fell from disuse. People stopped paying tithes. Couldn't upkeep the graves. Yeah. It seems like the gravekeeper, uh, the uphold, abandoned this place. Oh, the upholder. Oh, okay. So I guess. So, so, so Shun is outside now? Uh, and then Shun comes outside and he's like. <laughs> You, you see, uh, Alicordi is like, has yeah. just seen the undead Lotion's for like, the first time. And then Lotion's like, yeah. banish. Shun, and then get, fear not. The undead are gone. I have stopped them. We are safe. Dude, you really need to stop drinking. <laughs> Love it. Um, why don't both of you uh, tell Shun what he would be feeling from you? Let's talk about our feelings. Oh yeah, did you, did, Shun? Did you not feel just absolute terror from us while you were in there? Uh, I, I mean, yeah, I guess. But like, I mean, I I found this letter and it, it talks about how like the chapel just kind of fell from disuse and like people stopped paying their tithes and going to church here. So like the, the upkeeper just couldn't like do it anymore. I guess he had to like go get a job somewhere else. And hmm. um, I don't know why that would scare you so much i mean i guess like you go to church so like i mean that like those are the people who pay you so like that's kind of scary i guess um and i i don't know i mean you've got does it say uh, i don't know does it say well one what why are you me, so scared you know, you never, okay? never never mind it's okay well i'm sure you'll have your comeuppance soon um <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's in the chal in the chalice in his backpack yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. that'll come up i'm sure does it you guys say don't know about it does it say the name of the upholder on that letter? I mean, let me take another look at it. Does it have the name on it? Uh, no. no. It's got initials. M. U. Wait, M. U? Mm -hmm. Let me see that. And I snatched the letter out of his hand. Here. Paper cut all along his wall. <laughs> <laughs> Roll for paper cut. This makes me feel something now. And I look at it. Do I recognize the handwriting? Is it, does it have all the weird spelling mistakes? Oh, okay. 
<laughs> and Lotion's eyes go wide and his mouth opens and it opens wide and he goes, Oh, huh. May I, do you mind if I hold, hold on to this for you? Well, you've got I mean, it in your hands. You, if you want, I don't <laughs> fold it up. You shouldn't bandage this. It's horrible. <laughs> and I put it in my, <laughs> I put it in my pack. I mean, I Lotion, don't know why would I want it? Lotion reaches into his bag and pulls out his liquor bag, takes a good swig, holds it out to, to, to Alicordia. Uh, would yeah. you share me as a, would you care to join me in a drink? <sighs> With this kind of day? Yes. Not you two now. You're such a bad role model. I'm shut sorry. up. I, shut I, up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. You two, Shun. One of us. <laughs> uh, no, you're the undead oh, god. Google, <laughs> Google gobble. One of us. Have a drink, Shun. You don't have a drink? No, oh, fine. Good for you, I guess. More for me in Alicordia. No. <laughs> Peer pressure. <laughs> Now, a few, a few months ago, so I used to be a very, very high-ranking priest. Uh, well, while you're or, kind of telling us, can we kind of walk away while you're telling this? Yeah, I'd say you're like, hey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're right there. <laughs> it's like, it's like, be quiet. <laughs> they come back out through the mist like, oh, you're sort of, <laughs> <laughs> We Why start are the ropes on the gate? Squandered up. I guess we'll start making our way back to the inn. Yeah, I was just We'll say that we walk back. to the inn and yeah. then we sit down and we have a few drinks and Lotion opens up and he goes on, he goes, did I ever tell you why I joined the Ilmatari? My parents died when I was young. My father died when I was 14. Run over in the street by a horse and carriage. The driver didn't even stop. My mother, only a year later, dropped dead over the wash basin. Meta, that was a, she had a brain aneurysm. The church of El Mater was there for me in my darkest hour. They provided me with comfort and community. And even though my parents' deaths were not righteous and had no nobility, I could help others in mourning. I could prevent death and suffering in the innocent people. And so I joined the Ilmatari. Suffer Acuna, that man who was missing his eyes earlier, was the man who ordained me. He always held a, a special place in my memory. So I used to be a very, very high sufferer of the El Elmatari. To be honest, an arch sufferer, a grand high sufferer. I was particularly good at healing the sick and alleviating the pain of the dying. Staving death days, weeks longer, sometimes even resurrecting those that had just died. You used to resurrect people? Yes. But not like necromancy. I mean, like, that just means that they weren't dead yet. It's just medicine exists, you know? Like, uh... <laughs> well, yeah, they're just called potions. Love it. I traveled far and wide for the Ilmatari, easing suffering, curing the sick. But at some point, like many sufferers before me, I began to question my faith. My relationship with Ilmater began to weaken. I would pray, meditate, fast, and even flagellate myself, for to suffer in the name of Ilmater gives you strength. But it was granting me diminishing returns. This happened at the worst possible time, when I was called to the leper colony outside of Quernos, about six months ago. The leprosy was so bad there that dozens were dying every week, and it was compounding. Enduring servant Acuna accompanied me on this trial. Having traveled all over Telbos for the Ilmatari, I had not seen him in years. All was going well at the leper colony, until the cracks in my faith began to affect my abilities. And it escalated quickly when one leper appeared to have been possessed. Possession? Possession. That Devil? Demon? I'm not sure. I, Evil. Something I, bad. Like, there are bad people in the world. <laughs> Maybe he was just a bad person. <gasps> wow. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes my backstory. Look, in his face. No. Restored. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and my waning faith gave me a foothold for this evil, which eventually killed Acuna and every living person there. 
before resurrecting all of the dead and buried lepers. It mocked me, took pleasure in my failing faith. The only reason I stand here today is because I fled like a scared rabbit. I came to a few days, the Elmatari had taken me back in. And while recovering in the infirmary of the Tower of the Willful Sufferer, I received a mysterious letter from a man who referred to himself as Professor Morty Upholder. M.U. The letter was bizarre, cryptic, likely a hoax, perhaps the ramblings of a crazy person. But strange things began to happen. Coincidences, nightmares, recurring symbols appearing to me, one of which is a panther, a black panther. This letter from Professor Morty Upholder took me on a long cross-country journey through graveyards, forgotten towns. It ended up being both a wild goose chase and one of the most important periods of my life. For on that quest, I felt some sort of a new spiritual awakening in myself, like I'd never felt before. It's not ill matter. And I don't know if it's the devil, or that demon, or if it's another deity, I don't know. I'm trying to find out. And whoever this spirit is, are trying to guide me somewhere, or to something. It, well, if this leprechaun is... So, okay, this doesn't make any sense. You're, you're telling me that a possessed person took over a leopard colony and then brought it up and now you're seeing leopards? No, I'm seeing a panther. Panther. Leper, not le- like leprosy, not leper. Yeah, I know, I, 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 I know what <laughs> leprosy leper is. Colony. <laughs> yeah, it's just a big cat rescue. Tiger King. Yeah. Fucking Carol Baskin. <laughs> there it is. Uh, this, this doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why is that? Why is the Denny Spur never heard of this? They, there's usually a, a, a network informant that would tell everything what's going on in the tower. Great question. Probably because we didn't uh, collaborate our backstories together. Oh. Uh, I think the church actively suppressed it to suppress when a leopard colony okay gets him like <laughs> eviscerated off the face of the earth when it was supposed okay. to be run by the church. Okay, so it was covered up. Oh, okay. Lotion, would Lotion know that? We wouldn't know how the church operates. Lotion looks at um, Alicordia and goes, there's a very good chance that perhaps St. Celestine or the other master sufferers covered it up. But horrible things happened there. And Lots of death. And it's still there? Good this, question. This possessed person? Oh, I have is, no idea what happened to that person. I blacked out. Well, it seems like from you've been blacked drinking. out for a few months. Yeah, from the drinking. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you, Lotion? Like, I'm really worried about you. I've only known you for, like, you know, not even a whole tens day yet. And, like, I'm worried about you. Shun, as you say that, you feel like a vibration in your backpack <laughs> where the chalice is. And uh, all three of you just see him go. <laughs> and Explode into a bloody mist. And he's just surrounded by a, like, pink visible cloud uh, a faint pleasant odor and as the cloud dissipates he just seems like slightly more charming for the next few minutes <laughs> what the what the fuck <laughs> what where, the where'd that pink stuff come from what was that what? <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time his anus just starts gushing blood you just watch Shun, just like, like magic, and this haze goes around him, and he just seems like more charming than he was. Two Is he ago. aware of the haze around him? Himself? You all see this happen. Okay. You watch it. Like it's like you're sweating, and it comes out of you, but it comes out of you simultaneously. What? The fuck? My God! I don't. What'd you just do? I don't know. I didn't do anything. Are you a man now? <laughs> Is this? Did they drop? Did you guys, one of you guys like, or something. did one of you guys like, <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe something like got mixed in with one of my smoke bombs and like it went off. I, I, okay, hold on here. <laughs> this, 
how how more charming is he? <laughs> like charming enough that not that he has advantage on all checks for the next few minutes. All checks? Wow. Charisma. Oh, charisma. Like checks. charm. Like charm. And that's from the thing he found in the cathedral. It seems like his body reacted in some way. Um, oh! The halfling luck curse, right? Ish. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Lotion looks at Shun and s- realizes that Shun is like has like a slight glow. Like he's never realized how sharp and handsome he looked. And he goes, oh, Shun, you're so charismatic. What happened to you? Are you wearing a different cologne? Why are you being nice to me? I'm sure that Shun's uncomfortable receiving yeah. these compliments. Uh, many people at this table probably don't watch anime, but you know some scenes where it's like ridiculously oh. photorealistic. <laughs> yes, just like <laughs> like handsome Squidward. <laughs> handsome, all of a sudden. <laughs> handsome Squidward. Um, yeah, Shun's gonna Shun's gonna say, yeah, I think like someone probably's got like mixed in with one of my smoke bombs, and like I I don't know, like this should go away soon. It should be fine. I don't know what could have gotten mixed in, but like I, something pink clearly. Uh, <laughs> the conversation continues into the night. If there's anything else you want to do, uh, otherwise we'll kind of resolve the evening, and then uh, the next day the job starts. All right. So should we like hit the hay? I guess we uh, got like a big job tomorrow or something. There is one question I have to ask though. How how, how were undead coming up in the graveyard? This doesn't make any sense. If this. Oh my god, when did you what, what's start it? drinking with him? Did you not see anything? Ah! Oh! Hey, I touch. I touch Shun and I go, Your day will come and you will... You will see the light. Until then, you're an insufferable asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you're uh, back in the bar and in the corner you hear, Undead, huh? If it's the undead one sooner... There's 20 of them. My legions worked. The effect that I'm trying to give off is that you sound like crazy people talking okay, about this. I understand. Uh, like you, you know there's always that and one thinks guy the two of you at the pub crazy. who's like willing to engage in conversation and you just wish you wouldn't. Yes, that's me. Um, Clark, not Lotion. That's <laughs> um, Lotion, in response to Alicordia's question, goes, I, I have no idea. I didn't sense any reason as to why they may be there. I mean, it was an Ilmatari cemetery. I don't know. Is there any sort of check? Religion, usually. Six. It was an Ilmatari cemetery. You've never heard of it. You knew it was there, but you just thought it was just like non-denominational. Like, uh, you know, not every village has the ability to inter people with like full religious rites and masses. So they just put people in the ground with little memorial plaques or sticks to kind of remember them by. Or a giant pit. <laughs> and, and you always just thought it was just something like, before the city became the city. This was a plot of land that was just used for family burials. But when you saw it, you were like, this is nothing like what I expected. Interesting. Some Did something happen there that the Elmatari doesn't want people to know about it and they've abandoned that cemetery as a result? Maybe no, it's, it was because they went broke. The letter, the letter told us that. <clears throat> Bird, birds are surveillance for the government. <laughs> but, and then Lotion have you says, "Have you seen the tower of the willful sufferer? Does that strike you as a church that's out of money?" I mean, I haven't really been in town that long. It's a pretty big tower, but um, I mean, I don't know, like crunch, crunch, crunch. Uh, I mean, reading how's the, the Jello? <laughs> Re- Lo- Lotion will read this letter a little closer, I think. <clears throat> Please do. You want me to read it now? No, like, are you going to roll a check for it, or are you just going to examine it over a couple of days? Or I'll examine it over a couple of days. To, uh, yeah, because um, the last letter Lotion received from Professor Morgie Holder was cryptic, weird bizarre it seemed like it came from a crazy person using an alias um but yeah it doesn't make much sense to me that that cemetery would be abandoned because there's not enough money i mean we are a poor sufferers hence the suffering but that's a big tower i mean it's like 
the Pope's technically poor, right? Like, <laughs> he doesn't get a salary. But he sits on a throne made of gold. It's true. It's true. Mm. Yep. Yeah, but I mean, like, I mean, actually, no. And Stephen's like, I mean, if you looked at, like, the church as a whole, like, of, you know, Catholic or Pentecostal, whatever, like, but if you, you look like individual churches can be poor while the overall church is wealthy it is a thing fair enough I shouldn't wouldn't know a whole lot about that though because you know he only knows his you know religion in quotation marks I will not go back to the Tower of the Willful, Willful Suffer until I fully understand what I'm experiencing and who I am, what spirit or god or whatever this is, what deity, monster, whatever it is, whatever it is, and then I maybe will go back. Unless I, but I, I'm done with the Amatari as far as I'm concerned. Very good. I guess in the meantime, we can go check out this. Where's the, do I remember where the, um, uh, the dig site was supposed to have been? The dig site is uh, archaeological notes, so it's not like a map with a pin in it. Mm. It's a, a binder that says, we went through this mountain pass and we saw this and we saw that. Um, so if you gave me either a history check or you took it maybe to some sort of expert in some capacity, then you could interpret the notes. I'll try a history check on this. <laughs> Lojan looks at the notes and goes, these looks complicated. I And he touches you on the back and he goes, but I think... To mercy, pity, peace, and love is God, ill matter, dear. You get to roll a d4 on that check. Ooh. That's a 10. Gonna check to see what my history was, depending. No multiple attempts, right? Only if you have a higher and it's contextual. Oh, okay. Because, like, if Chun was, like, a real smart dude, he could be like, oh, yes. I could take a look at this. Maybe I know the area. I'm not from around here. What's your history score? Plus one. Oh, well... Lotion has a plus four. Maybe, maybe Lotion can try. Also from Karnos. So, uh, I mean, you are, are struggling. There's a couple names that are kind of pointed out that are like specific names of like passes and switchbacks. You can tell it's mountainous, but beyond that, hard to tell. Because, yeah, Shun's from just on the other side of a mountain ridge. Lotion closes his eyes and goes, Well, I suppose I can give it a whirl. I ask to endure. Share freely your divine strength for in your name. I rise. Uh, that's a 20. Regular 20. Ah, damn. So I think we'll make a, like a PDF version of this map maybe accessible on the on the website. Mm-hmm. Bloodfoodwithasheep.com But uh, if you look, there's a mountain range called the Frisky Peaks. If you could point it out. Ha! Ha ha! I was right. I knew it. Why is it? Why? What were you talking about? That's the mountain pass that shuns from just beyond. No, no, oh, okay. no, no, you're from over here. You absolutely would have passed by this mountain range. Um, this, uh, I mean, the mountain range is substantially larger than just a couple peaks in the middle of Pretty the place. Sure it, no, 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 no. What's the other one called? It's, it's, it's something stupid. <laughs> the Restless Peaks. You can remember okay, Pandora okay. Peaks. You, Pandora Peaks. No. <laughs> you, you called it the Restless Peaks? And then I I made the frisky peaks because I was <laughs> I was I was a little bit drunk when I made this map. <laughs> They're like that's a dumb name, but I named mine the frisky peaks. <laughs> now, Lucian, uh, you had quite the extensive education. You're aware of geography and all of the local towns and what have you and what's not. Although Telbus is pretty wild westy, so there's not like a agreed upon consensus of where power borders lie and which. Uh, area lays under what domain and what have you. Uh, you know the Frisky Peaks for the most part. Yeah, he's smiling. You like it. <laughs> um, I'm just imagine, imagine a big bear jiggling tits. <laughs> frisky! Frisky, <laughs> frisky Peaks. Uh, you get very cold up there. That's very pointy mountains. Um, you know them to be a fairly impassable mountain range. It's it's one of those younger, newer mountain ranges. You know, the ones that are like very sharp, jagged edges and points instead of Older, kind of more weathered, more what time for water to pass through areas and create kind of crevasses and, and, and uh, chasms and, and passageways. You don't know of any peoples or places in the mountain. But uh, what you're reading from this notebook 
is that somewhere inside the mountain, following a path, suddenly you come to a great open clearing. And based on what you're reading, it looks like this clearing actually creates uh, a, a natural kind of desert-like phenomenon because of the, the rain shadow effect. So rain can't get up over the mountains. And as a result, this huge kind of expansive area inside the mountains is just this big arid desert surrounded on all sides by high mountain jagged peaks. So it's it's barren. It's lifeless. No one would have any reason to ever want to go there. That's where it is. <laughs> Lotion says, that mountain range is barren. No one would want to go there. It's quite, quite treacherous. Well, yeah, it's I, and frisky. I passed by it on the way here. It uh, kind of sucked. Yeah. Well, it's, it's also you? extremely far from here, so I don't uh, think we'll yeah. be checking that place out right now. How long would it take us to get there? <clears throat> days. Yeah, it was a long... On horse? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. a couple of ride, a couple of days ride by horseback. Mm. Very long. We don't really... A full 10 day. A full week. You should see the glares coming out of here, people. In my defense, <laughs> you asked me for that information and I got mad when I gave it. <laughs> it happened. Here we are. All right. You're, well, you're both just, the messenger and the one who did it. Well, if you guys want to stay at the end, I'm just going to go to my home and I'll meet you back here in the morning. Oh, it must be nice to have a house and a bed to sleep in. Isn't it awfully nice to have a home? <laughs> Isn't it rather great to have a hovel? It's it's not what you might think it is. A hovel? It's quite novel. This is Telosian in his head only. Yeah, like I don't think she really gets along with uh, her dad. And Shun's unaware that he's putting these thoughts out. <laughs> They're probably not that great at home. It's too bad. <clears throat> oh. oh, yes, of course. What? What? <laughs> Lotion says that out loud. <laughs> to the... uh, oh, uh, I just remembered something I'm supposed to on Katarl's day. Whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm laundry on Katarl's day. Yeah, it always comes hey, back to Katarl's day. It might be, Lotion, it might be an idea for you to have a shower or some type of bath or something. It... Look, Lotion, I... Old habits die hard. I've got... I've got room back at, at my inn, like where I'm staying. You can, you can crash there. I can sleep on the chair. Thanks, Shin. It's big enough. We can share a bed together. It's okay. That doesn't look ominous at all. <laughs> it's, it's been done. It's been done to death. I'm sorry. Uh, odds or evens? Hmm? Odds or evens? Evens. Okay. Um, while heading home, your route takes you past a couple stores that, you know, you're familiar with, including one that says, Filch Batters, closed until further notice <laughs> due to health code violations. <laughs> As the camera zooms into Filch Batter in the shadows, like, I'll get you. Yeah. You know that thing that you put the knife against to sharpen it? A strop? You, it just zooms in on Filch Batter. But how would he know? How would he know it's us? Oh, he doesn't. doesn't. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. How would they, how would know? they know? <laughs> you all go to bed. <laughs> Thank you. The next night you awake and you, uh, you have to, the next morning rather, you have to head back to the tavern, the place where you tend to meet your new employer. The eel's foot with a sign underneath that says, uh, now with no defective prostitutes. Prosta foods. <laughs> <laughs> you make your way back into the room in the back, uh, and it's the same thing. That just the three of you. No no other hangers on this time. And uh, after a few minutes. Wait, guys, what happened to Big Grip? We never got him out of jail. <laughs> well, I think he's going to just have to stay there for a bit. <laughs> like we did that to him. I'm sorry, Scott, for interrupting. Just, we, we cut You're like, to, no one else is there. Cut to a scene where he's just in the, the thing where his head and his hands are in the wood. And he's just like, the socks. Hey, any minute. No, oh, yep, my friends are going to come and rescue me. <laughs> I like to imagine Big Grip in the in the stocks sneezes and accidentally breaks them. 
But he goes, uh oh. oh. And he just puts them back. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't want to break the rules. <laughs> <laughs> the door opens. And in walks the mysterious benefactor, the half drow. And he looks over at you and he goes, What a sorry lot you lot are. Luckily, I have a solution for that. You idiots are going to do something for me. There's a town to the west of here, but a couple days ride. You know, I get the feeling you're not happy with us. The slow turn of Alicordia's head towards Shun as she starts, like, shooting daggers at him. It's like... Oh, you too. Oh. (laughs) I have just been staring at Steven this whole time. There's a small town that has had a bit of a... Let's call it a law enforcement problem. The Shire Reeve recently died under mysterious circumstances, and they hired a new Shire Reeve, sight unseen. And now some weird stuff's been going on in the town, and it's just disrupting my plans. And I would like it resolved. And since you work for me now, uh, you get to do it. So, if we work for you, what do we get out of this? Like I asked this question last time, it didn't go well. It's pr- it's pretty simple. Um, I don't release the information I have fabricated that you were the one guilty for your friend's murder. I don't have the person in your village teach Lily and Gaius to fear the dark. And he just looks at Lotion and he goes, You've got enough going on. Anyway, the village is called Waco. Just to the west of here, a couple days ride. Waco? Uh, Waycomb. Okay. Like uh, a honeycomb? (laughs) It's just, I thought it was a different kind of blackmail and shun. Oh, I've got lots. I've got fingers in every basket. In every hole. (laughs) Yeah, I know about the artifact, but let's call it insurance. Shun just nods and he's quiet he throws a piece of paper on the table and he goes anyway blackmail blah, 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 blah. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> hey uh how can we contact you if we need to talk to you he flips you off as he walks out the door <laughs> yeah wow. good talk good talk that's uh it's fine, it's fine. <clears throat> i guess he'll Didn't know hurt. No, i guess fine. He'll... i'm fine it's fine i really don't care so, what's no, on the paper? It didn't hurt. It's okay. Uh, it's uh, just a, a map that shows you where Wakeholm is on the, the map. Okay. Well, well, guess if there's anything that we need, we should probably get it. Oh, so we're going like out that way anyways by so the first north, Way north? North and west? We have to go through some mountains, it looks like. Oh, by the fingers of Haylocks. So we're going up by the Frisky Peaks anyways, which is where the shield was found. Do you have any horses? I think we need to go, um, I think we need to rent some horses for this. Did he give us more journey? money? Because we only have like six gold. <laughs> oh my God, you're right. I think I can. He did not give you money. I think I might be able to get a writ for some horses. Okay, that, that's good. Let's go get a writ. Cracker. What's a writ? What's a writ? <laughs> <laughs> Just like an IOU. Okay. It's from, uh, from the gang. Thank you, Alicordia. You've stuck your neck out for us financially more than a few times, and it does not go unnoticed. We will pay you back as moths fly out of our pockets. <laughs> <laughs> you take your... It's literally the... <laughs> I seek the light, brother. Uh, okay. That moth empties its pockets <laughs> into smaller moths. <laughs> <laughs> Two humans pop out of it. <laughs> it's a button paper clip in a moth. Uh... Okay, so I guess, uh, yeah, Alicordi would just try to <laughs> go to, yeah, probably like <clears throat> one of the gang warehouses to uh, take out some horses. You head on by to the gang warehouse, and when you get there, uh, give me an insight check. Twelve. General feeling of suspicion coming off of them, like they're eyeing you like, Hmm. Yeah. But also, 
Mm-hmm. Hard to tell. It could be anything. Yeah. You think that your best bet is to head to the... The stables that is connected to your gang that has the most reasonable rates and the least capable employees. Those would probably be the ones in Chickenport. Love the fact we named an area named Chickenport. <laughs> Lead the way, Alicordia, to Chickenport. You uh, head on down to the stables and a staggeringly handsome man with a chiseled jaw, rippling pecs, shirtless. Just shoveling hay. And he turns and he wipes his brow and he looks at you and he says, I don't know that brave adventure. <laughs> Fuck. I was waiting for that. Fuck. <laughs> Hello, well, um, <laughs> glory upon you. Glory upon you, too. My name is Dave. <laughs> and I exist outside time and space. <laughs> 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 and then he looks off in the distance like, why did I say that? Uh, <laughs> Just a bit of an inside joke for the view for the listeners at home, but you'll see. <laughs> Alright, Dave. Uh, we need three horses, please. What's that you say? My backstory? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 definitely not. No, not no, today. no, no. Maybe next time. When we no, return okay. the horses, we'll get your backstory. <laughs> if we return the horses. He starts talking. He's like, well, you see, I awoke. And then he walks inside the barn and all yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh thank god let's saddle these horses and go <laughs> and comes back in with three saddled horses and goes and then I woke up here <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird uh, okay no that's good that's good <clears throat> alright thank thank you Dave I'll just hop up and be like he looks Motion at you and he gives you each a silver piece and he goes <laughs> this is how it works <laughs> <laughs> he looks, Lotion, as they right away, looks over his shoulder and looks at Dave like, something odd about that fellow. I don't think this is the last time we'll be seeing Dave. As he picks his nose with his pinky. <laughs> That's unfortunate. <laughs> looks at it. Something familiar about this guy. I think he got kicked by a horse a few too many times. The fifth horse kicked it back in place. <laughs> 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 Off we go to, what's the place called that we're going to? Waycomb. <laughs> Wacom. Wacom. Not Waco. No. No, no branch no, no. Lavidians here. Nope. Nope. Just nope, one. Nope, Maybe nope, just nope, one. Nope, nope, nope. One there's one branch Lavidian. The last branch Lavidian. The last branch Lavidian. As you see town cresting in the distance, you see a single tree with a single branch. A branch Lavidian. <laughs> <laughs> You're making rain to town. Uh, everyone give me perception checks. 24 hours is over. Sorry, Steven. <gasps> nat 20. Also oh, nat 20. Oh, Yay! Oh, nat we're 20 just, brothers! Oh, 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 we're just staring at each other. <laughs> the J-O, It's a J-O moment. <laughs> guys, guys. Are you serious? Six. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, you can't join in the J-O fun. What do we see, Scott? Shun's, Shun's behind you, too, and he's so short that he, like, can't see. Uh, as you're approaching the village of wake home the path that leads in you're probably about still another half day's ride and you can see it just cresting over the valley you know the tops of buildings starting to pop up because there's a couple buildings that are like on a higher cliff kind of thing with a nat 20 you see signs of a wagon that has been dragged off into the brush and hidden up hold up here i think i just want to go check this thing out what what there's, is it? There's a there's a little wagon here. Oh, is there? Oh. And so Alicordia takes the reins of her horse and kind of trots over to this uh, covered wagon. You make your way to the covered wagon and you're going through it. And uh, you can see that there's blood and signs of a struggle. Like oh. maybe someone was attacked in this wagon and now someone's hidden the evidence. Because this wagon has like been taken off to the road, like the edge of the road, the path brushed over leaves kind of thrown down over the tracks branches pulled down to cover the wagon like this was hidden really well the fact that you spotted it nat 20 good job both of us yeah um <laughs> shun went the other way <laughs> to the woods he's like hmm pop there's no, poplars guys there's no wagon over here <laughs> he's looking there's at just, like there's just a bunch of aspen guys I found a you, clue you can tell it's an aspen because of the way it is <laughs> it, it's it's 
I found poison ivy. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, was, that was a terrible joke. Steven. Thank you. I thought it was. Thank good. you. I liked it. The deadpan. Um, uh, can Alcordia do, or with the twenty, continue over like an investigation check on the wagon and stuff like that? Like well, find their stuff in it. We'll like, say the twenty carries over, and you can see there's a blood trail that kind of leads off further into the woods, okay. and you find a human body that looks like it tried to like escape and died and um, mostly decomposed like it's been at least two weeks two weeks and the woods have gotten to it two two weeks two weeks two how long are you in Mars for two 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 <laughs> two week two 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 week I'll call you hop off the horse and sort of tie it to a branch and then go and investigate the corpse just kind of See if there's anything unusual about it. The last thing I'll give you with that nat 20 is that he was wearing some sort of vest and the front left breast has been ripped out. Like a badge was on it? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Closion says, I agree. Very interesting. What do you suppose this might mean? Hmm. He probably had some sort of, if it's not a badge, some sort of Logo, symbol, uh, what's it called? Uh, coat of arms. Would this have to do with the, the Sharif that was? The Shire Reeve. The Shire Reeve. Hey, guys. Sure. That's where Sheriff comes from. Hey, guys. Oh, the Reeve was the person in charge where, of law enforcement in, in Shire Towns. <laughs> God damn it, Shen. <laughs> guys, I'm lost in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> Shen, literally just follow the sound of our voice. We're literally right over here. Marco. Meanwhile, like, Halicordia is like, get that fucker. <laughs> and she does like hide. <laughs> setting, hu- yeah. setting hunting traps. Lotion also hides just to fuck with. Um, no. yeah. Is there anything we can, like any um, items in the cart that might indicate what? what? It looks like it's been stripped clean. <sighs> Whoever took this stuff did a darn good job of it. And we think the person in the vest was driving the cart or were they in the cart? Uh, it looks like they were in the cart. Okay. Because the blood trail starts <clears throat> from the, the seat area, and then it makes its way to the woods. To the woods. Was it, was it dragged, or was he crawling? Looks like he tried to, to like, crawl away. Was. Get to safety. But it also looks like, based on, like, the blood and stuff, like someone found him here when he tried to crawl away and took care of things. Yeah. Finished him off. There's, there's no cum stains <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, there could be <clears throat> roll, per, roll perception. Um, he's all, just, oh, uh, he's all sticky. Yeah, it seems like he was into it though. <laughs> he he also came. It was consensual. So consensual. Yeah, it was everywhere. So maybe this would be an idea. To actually, should we take this body to this way? Oh no. Let's figure out what's going on. Wake home first. If we've known, if this was well uh, well hidden enough that people didn't know it was here for at least two weeks, another day or two won't matter. Well, let's go to the town and and figure out what's happened to the Sharif. All you right, head on into town, um, and as you kind of enter along the road into the main area, um, people look at you and they immediately go. <laughs> And you can tell that they're making faces like visitors, people. We don't get many visitors in these parts. And eventually a guy is like someone runs off and then someone very official looking comes forward. He's a bald, older, distinguished looking man. And he goes, we don't get many passes through here in Wakeham. I am the alderman and my name, he looks at his paperwork. Is Daniel. <laughs> I'm Daniel. I'm the alderman of this small village. Come, come. What is an meta? Was an alderman? An alderman? Uh, oh, alderman. It, it comes from uh, elder man. It's like a leader, kind of mayor type of a person. An older male in a distinguished position that's semi inherited. Is Daniel wearing any sort of uh, sigil? No. Uh, this would be closer to like a mayor. Okay. The mayor! Yes. But he's not uh, a lord. He's not a lord mayor. He's just a, a guy in charge of the village, more or less. Okay. 
Okay, remind us what we're supposed to be doing here again. <laughs> uh, we're trying to... We hear that they've had some oh, right. issues with the law enforcement, and we are to fix that because it is hindering the progress of our mysterious blackmailers stuff. All right. <clears throat> yes, please lead the way, Lord... No, Mayor Daniel. Alderman Daniel. Alderman Daniel. I don't like to stand on pomp and circumstance, but... And then he taps his belly and he goes, But only because it couldn't support me. <laughs> In like a jolly, kind of jovial fashion. Like he's trying to be friendly. Okay. Huh. Um, Hail and well met. My name is... Sufferer... Well, Lotion. This is Shun. And this is Alicordia. Can we talk to you for a few minutes? Daniel? Absolutely. But... It's custom that you take a tour of our little town. And he skips off into the town. <laughs> oh, no, I, oh. I don't think we need a... What a drag. Okay. And he stops and he points at a building and he goes, This is our general store. And a shopkeeper comes out. He's walked out. like five feet away. <laughs> yeah. the shopkeeper comes out. He's a guy with black hair and a goatee. And he says, Hello. Yes. My name is Reginald. No, I am the shopkeeper. Does Reginald seem like he's being held hostage? Insight. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, Can I also roll 19. Inside? Oh, I don't care. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to... No, he was too good. Uh, no. He, yeah, he seems... <laughs> he seems like a really young boy, but he's not a bad uh, fellow. He's not a bad... Uh, he's not being held hostage. He's like... Hello. Welcome to the village. I am original. My voice has changed. <laughs> <laughs> what was it originally? Oh, I liked it. No, no, no. It, you almost started out with New Zealand, but it I like that better. Easily. Uh, yes, hello. Welcome to the village. I am original. <laughs> My voice changes every time I speak <laughs> due to a medical condition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's something that wouldn't be like confusing to viewers at all. <laughs> Welcome he, to he the He takes bridge. out a giant butcher's knife and then he slashes a piece of paper and a, a price tag falls and a slightly lower price is below it. And he says, Deal is here uh, to die for. <laughs> <laughs> and then he backs into the shop and he closes his Lotion, <laughs> Lotion's like, He's the one! And uh, <laughs> yeah, goes up and starts stabbing. <laughs> die! <laughs> Uh, that, well, that's, that sounds, that sounds lovely. Okay. Um, right. Where's your, where's your inn? Hi. <laughs> no, no, we didn't, we didn't want the stables. <laughs> you don't want the stables. <laughs> Well, I mean, is we have no, to stable our distance. horses. A no, man the, waving. <laughs> the, the most prime attraction of Wake Up. me again. Come to this part of the adventure. <laughs> he brings you by Town Square, and he points at a man, and he says, That is our town crier. His name? John Crier. <laughs> <laughs> town Crier goes, it's, it's really nice to meet you. I'm super happy to be here today. I love it when new people come to the village. And how often do new people come to the village? They like one every. What, was there was there one? You know, I don't know. I'm just gonna maybe I'm just gonna spitball one out there. Maybe about I don't know uh, two two or three weeks ago. No. <laughs> Inside. Inside. <laughs> Inside that fucker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a seventeen. 20, Twenty, but not that. <laughs> 18 The mayor looks at him and he goes Yes, the new Shire Reef came And he goes, uh, yes, that's right I forgot about the Shire Reef I'm sorry, dates are hard for me Because of the accent <laughs> uh -huh. Well, it's, I can understand that From two's ten days That has passed like, Yeah, we, we use the standard Seven day week <laughs> It's very confusing <laughs> Not Catarl's Day. Oh, we don't believe in Catarl's Day. <laughs> it's too difficult for me to say. <laughs> because of the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh-huh. 
<clears throat> Lotion is looking around like this is far too odd. <laughs> the alderman goes, next stop on the tour! And he skips along through the town square and he points out this beautiful looking building. I thought you were going to say beautiful looking woman. No. It has a sign out front. It's a building in shape of a woman. It says, Ye Old Culinary School. And inside you hear, Boy, what the bloody fuck is this? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs>